you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I will be talking about all of the books I read in February. <laughs> February was a fantastic reading month for me, I feel like. I don't think I read an abnormally large amount of books, but considering how February went last year, I had a great reading month and I read a ton of five stars, definitely a disproportionate amount than I usually read. So that is very, very exciting. I have a lot of books to push on to you guys and I'm so excited to do that. So the first book that I read in the month of February was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I have been needing to read this book for so, so long and I finally got to it during February because I had an extra push to read this, to pick this up, not only because it was Black History Month, but I actually got to meet Tomi at the Adeline Gray signing, who is the debut author of All the Stars and Teeth. If you haven't checked out that vlog where I include that signing, definitely go check it out. It was probably one of my favorite signings I've ever been to because the two authors just had so much chemistry together and it was so funny and fun. It was a great time. So definitely go check out that vlog if you're interested in book signings. But I absolutely loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is following our main character Zelly and she lives during this time in this land, in this country where magic has disappeared and has been lost and the traces of this magic is seen through the magi and they have a characteristic trait about them and that is their white hair and these magi since magic has left the land have been subjugated against, discriminated against, by the current rulers who believe that magic is deadly and Zelly, after coming across this magic scroll that was stolen by the princess of the rulers, her, the princess, and her brother now have to set on a quest to bring magic back to the land. I remember really loving Zelly's character development in here. It was probably one of my favorite things about this book aside from the magic system which is a very elemental based magic system system. It, I've heard a lot of people compare it to Avatar, which I guess you could call that because elemental in Avatar, but it's a lot more involved with gods and deities, which I probably would have picked this up way sooner if I knew that gods were involved because each of the Magi clan is ruled by their own deity and they call upon that deity every single time they need to use their magic, which I had such a fun time learning about. And overall, I feel like the plot of this book was also very well done. It is very formulaic if you would say, but it's very structured in that it's definitely a adventure story and it's just overall a very, very entertaining read. And although I didn't like three out of four of the characters, Zelly really made the book so worth it and such an engaging experience for me. Just seeing her growth, ugh, she is so strong and resilient and I just want to give her a hug because I love her so much. I really thought Amari's chapters were super boring. I know a lot of people don't really like Inan. I'm kind of indifferent towards him. I thought his journey was interesting whether I liked him as a character or not, but definitely not the greatest cast of characters for me personally, but again, the world, the magic system, Zelly, our main character, it was all so interesting and fun and entertaining and I really really enjoyed my reading experience for this book. So I am very very excited to pick up the sequel especially knowing the cliffhanger that this ends on. I cannot believe you guys had to wait a whole year for the sequel because wow this ended on an incredible cliffhanger. I am very excited to pick up the sequel soon and hopefully I will do so and I won't lag and wait months and months and months before picking up the second book because I I usually do that. But regardless, I really enjoyed this one. Definitely recommend if you want a really cool world, magic system, all that jazz. I really, really enjoyed it. The next books that I finished in the month of February, I'm not going to talk about too much because I have a whole dedicated video to them. I reread The Infertile Devices by Cassandra Clare, which is Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork princess. This series was probably my absolute favorite growing up as a teenager. This trilogy means a whole lot to me just 
from the nostalgia and just the sheer emotions that it made me feel while reading this. I had such an amazing time rereading these for the first time and in fact you can watch me reread these for the first time in my previous video where I did a vlog style rereading the Infernal Vices for the first time. So go check that out. It does have spoilers so if you haven't read the series and you don't want to be spoiled for it, I love these books. I gave all of them five stars. Although the middle book definitely has middle book syndrome and it was quite boring, the characters in here are top notch. They are really god tier. Regardless of the plot, I think nobody can argue that the character work that Cassandra Clare did in this trilogy was impeccable. It really makes you care so much for these characters in a way that few other book series have made me care do whatever English is and I enjoyed this so much and I'm honestly kicking myself for not rereading it sooner. Karen Gray Stairs is canon. No arguments valid against that. The next book that I read in the month of February was Aquacorn Co by Katie O'Neill. Katie O'Neill is the author of the Tea Dragon Society which I love so so much and I have set it on my mission to read all of her books and I believe this is the last one that I had to read, if not one of the last ones. This is about ocean conservation. It is about our main character who travels back to her mother's home island, and this island has a lot of storms come through, so they're constantly needing to rebuild. And it's just a discussion over again, like I said, ocean conservation, using what you need rather than excess and all of those things. It was beautiful. It has a female-female romance in here, which I believe all of Katie O'Neill's books have had thus far, which is fantastic. It was so cute. The art style was beautiful. I gave it four out of five stars. Definitely recommend for you or maybe a younger child in your life. It was just a really cute, fun time and I loved it. The next book I read was Penrick's Demon by Louise McMaster Bejold. I definitely didn't say that right, no. But this is a novella from her Five God series, I think is what it's called. I'm not sure. This I got on recommendation from Huck from Badger Reads, and it is about our main character, Penric, who is this lower lord's son. And one day he, under very, very strange circumstances, gets possessed by a demon, and this particular demon contains the souls of, I believe it's 12 different women. A lot of women occupy this one singular demon and it is a very humorous and interesting scenario that you go through where this young teenage boy has a bunch of women inside of his head. It's just, it's very unique and very interesting and I had such a fun time reading this. The only problem I had reading this and the reason that I had to give this three stars was that it says at the beginning, because I read this in the bind up, there's three of these novellas. It says in the beginning from the author that you don't need to read the Five God series to read these. And I'm going to have to disagree because they just mention a lot about the hierarchy of this world and the, and the different sects of the religion and the politics of the world and all of those things that really just went over my head because they weren't explained. But all of of the scenes with Penric and Desdemona, which is what he names his demon, were amazing and I loved learning about the demon possession and, and like the relationship between like the sorcerer and the demons and their interactions and their dialogue. Loved that so much. It was more of the background outside things that were going on that I didn't really understand so I feel like I didn't enjoy it to its full capacity if I would have read the series before going into this. So I definitely do want to check out that series in the future but this writing style is definitely a lot more early modern fantasy that isn't as easy to get through necessarily. So I don't know how 
early I'm going to get to this series, but I definitely do want to get to it soon because, again, I love anything to do with gods and an interesting religious system and hierarchy and all of those things. So it will definitely be on my radar eventually, just not anytime soon, probably. The next book I read was Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kawami Mimbala. This one is one of the Rick Riordan Presents books, so it is centered around African American folklore and mythology and I was really really excited to get to this book. This was one of my most anticipated reads for 2019. Didn't get to it in 2019 but I made it up for it this year and unfortunately it did not hit the mark for me. I really enjoyed the characters in this book, especially Tristan. I think he goes through a lot of growth in this story, and I really, really enjoyed watching him go through that growth. I really loved Gum Baby, who is this interesting baby made of clay gum. I don't know. And that's one of the reasons why my enjoyment of the book was a little diminished, not because of Gum Baby, baby and not entirely knowing what she was, but I just don't think the world was explained enough. I don't think the mythology was necessarily explained enough, and for a mythology-based book, I kind of am looking for that. I found the plot very scattered, and it wasn't entirely structured a whole lot. Halfway through the book, I still didn't know exactly what we were doing. I kind of knew the end result that we were trying to aim for, but I didn't know how we were going to do it, why we had to do it. I didn't understand the motivations of the villains. I loved the symbolism to the African diaspora with the villains, but I didn't understand their motivations. And also, this book just had a ton of action. I didn't know that too much action was a thing in a book, but this book really showed me that it was because it's just every single chapter it seemed like there was just this big action scene and I understand that that could be appealing to younger readers and could keep them interested, but for me it was just very distracting and very confusing. I believe I gave it a three star on Goodreads because I didn't want to lower its rating or anything because again this is a middle grade story. I am not the target audience for this but I still would recommend people giving it a shot. I feel like I'm definitely in the minority here, especially hearing all these positive reviews of this book. So definitely take my review with a grain of salt and try it out for yourself if it still interests you. Now the next book I read in February I'm so excited to talk about it again because I'm going to use every excuse I can to talk about this book. I read The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. Now, although I will take every opportunity to rave about this book now, I don't want to do it too much on this video because I actually have a review up and ready for you guys to go watch, so definitely go check that out because I need everybody to read this book. A brief synopsis, this is about our main character who is summoned to the Sky Palace, this grand palace, and she has been made one of the heirs to this kingdom, and she has to battle it out with two other people who happen to be her cousins for the rightful place in heir, and because she is the underdog in this scenario, she comes from a barbarian nation, she teams up with the gods that these people have enslaved in order to get a leg up in the competition and hopefully free them in the process of trying to stay alive. This book has the best and it, it's I don't want to say it's enemies to lovers it's just it's a what do they call it it's um unbalanced power imbalance of power relationship and it's definitely a I don't trust you then you grow to trusting and then falling in love and then kind of a soulmate reincarnation trope. It's a lot of things. Just read it. It is so incredible. If you want a fantasy that actually has a really really good romance that definitely doesn't take away from the plot and works very well with the plot and the story, look no further. This is amazing. The writing style of N.K. Jemisin is incredible. It employs one of my favorite writing styles and that is when the narrator talks to the reader. I 
love that shit. So if you have any recommendations for books where narrators talk to the reader, please let me know. Another thing about this book is it really delves into the philosophy of being a god and what it means to live thousands and thousands of years and what that kind of does to your logic, thought process, emotions, etc. Five out of five stars. I have convinced so many people to pick this up since reading it and I'm so grateful for it. Thank you guys for listening to me and listening to my taste. That's all I'm gonna say. Definitely go check out my review if you need more convincing. I highly recommend looking into it. Loved this book. So excited to continue with this trilogy. I am currently reading the sequel right now. I am so excited to become an N.K. Jemisin stan. My life is better for it and yours could be too. The next book I read was another five stars and that was The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman. This is a picture book and this is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. I am not going to say anything more about it. Just know that's what it is. It is a fairy tale retelling and know that this is a requirement. No questions asked, no substitutions. This is a requirement for your reading journey with this book. You need to have the physical copy with the audiobook because this audiobook has become my absolute favorite audiobook of all time. It is cinematic. You hear footsteps and like whispering and it is a full cast. It is like a movie. It is unlike anything else I have read. Definitely recommend listening to it and reading it in a darker room at night by candles because it's a bit creepy and it's so good. It's Neil Gaiman is just the master at twisted fairy tales and he takes these fairy tales and just turns them on their heads and it's so good. He is a master. He truly is. Definitely pick this up. It was so amazing. It was a really quick read. Again, it's just a little 50 pages, I think. It's a picture book. The art is incredible. So beautiful. I want like two copies, one for my shelves and then one to just cut up and frame on my walls because it was that beautiful. Loved it so, so much. Highly cannot recommend enough. Definitely go read it. Go listen to it. You gotta do both. Again, it's a requirement not a suggestion. The next book I read was The Guinevere's Deception by Kirsten White and this is an Arthurian legend retelling following Guinevere but she's not necessarily what you expect. She actually happens to be a copy of the real Guinevere and she is the daughter of Merlin set out to Camelot in order to protect Arthur and save Camelot from from this formidable evil that is going to grace the land. I hated this book. Okay, hate is a strong word, but I did not enjoy my reading experience for this whatsoever. It is just so boring. The writing style is beautiful. It is very atmospheric and Kirsten White just does a very great job at forming words together and making sentences, you know, as writers do. I really did enjoy the way in which she said things and described things. English, right? I can't use it. She does a really great job at depicting medieval times and medieval Europe. She does such a great job, in fact, that I was reminded how freaking boring it would have been to live during medieval Europe times because wow was I bored out of my mind while reading this. It just was very mundane. It was Guinevere going to Jeff's and she going to the market and doing her hair and it was just so boring and mundane as I've said. The magic system is also not explained at all. She kept talking about drawing some knots or tying some knots and these knots were magical and she was doing stuff with blood and she was just, I don't even know what she was doing, chanting, whatever. I, nothing was explained 
at all and to an extent I can let magic just be magic like that's fine but that is not my preferred method of ingesting fantasy I did not enjoy that aspect everybody kept saying to wait until the end of this book so I did I listened to you all and yet again you guys disappoint me because nothing happened in the ending I don't know what I don't know what I was supposed to be waiting for maybe it's just because I literally didn't care whatsoever but one of the plot twists I knew because I watched the BBC Merlin show, so I already knew about that. I, I was like listening to the audiobook and then it ended, and I was like, wait, what was, what was I waiting for? Because now it's gone, and I don't know what I was supposed to be surprised about, or what was supposed to make me like this book. So, suffice to say, did not enjoy this book at all. I gave it two out of five stars. The only thing that I really enjoyed about this book, aside from the writing style, was Lancelot. Lancelot is gender bent. She is a woman, and so her and Guinevere have some chemistry together because Guinevere and Lancelot, you know, they have that affair going on. I assume that they are going to be endgame, so that means that this series is going to end with a female-female relationship, which I love and support. But so far, all of the female female romances that I have read have been boring as hell like lesbians come on let's get exciting let's get angsty let's get danger and death and fighting I don't know I am just so tired of the mushy gushy female female romances give me sex give me power give me anything but boring bland eh. Because that's what I'm getting so far, and I'm not appreciating it. So, we're going to need to pick up the pace, ladies. We're going to need to pick up the pace, because that's what I deserve. Thank you. The last book that I read in the month of February was City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now, this is another case where I don't want to talk too much about it, because you guys will be getting a review for this book later in the month. But I will say that this is about our main character, Vivian, and she is writing to her ex lover's daughter. One day after her daughter's mother passes away, she writes to Vivian and she asks, now that my mother has passed, will you tell me who you were to my father? And so Vivian is writing this long, long letter to her ex-lover's daughter. Very reminiscent of Evelyn Hugo. We follow Vivian as she moves to New York City and she starts to work at her aunt's theater and she starts sewing costumes for the showgirls and for the plays and this was so incredible. I had such a fun time with this book. I heard so many negative reviews or negative things about this book before picking it up and it really just lowered my motivation to read it, but I finally got the audiobook, which is a fantastic audiobook by the way. Definitely recommend. Listen to it while reading at the same time and it was so engrossing and immersive. I finished this in like one day. I could not put it down. It was so entertaining. If you loved Evelyn Hugo, there is no reason why you wouldn't love this because it is kind of the exact same format where it's an older woman telling her story. And I said this in my vlog, it is exactly like Evelyn Hugo without the weird racial commentary that Evelyn Hugo has. And rather than racial commentary, it is talking about the sexual freedom and liberties of women. <sighs> that speaks to me and my soul on a whole different level than I could have uh, ever imagined. It was so funny and realistic and enlightening and empowering. You meet so many women in here and I wanted to be every single one of them. Even the ones that weren't necessarily great people, I wanted to be them because they were so glamorous and confident and sure of themselves without having any idea what they wanted to do in life. And I was so inspired by every character in here. The only negative thing about this book, and I will definitely preface this, is it's definitely not intersectional feminism in any capacity. I wouldn't 
call this a feminism novel? I mean, it is to an extent, right? It's talking about a woman in the 1940s and how she just wanted to sleep around and that's what made her happy and that is valid and that is how she wanted to live her life and that's how she did live her life. So, of course, it is feminist to an extent, but there isn't any people of color in this book. There isn't any queer discussions in this book, which is just doesn't really make sense for a book centered around promiscuity and sexuality and how our main character does have interactions with women, but she never questions her own sexuality. There is another character in here who is a lesbian. However, she had a husband prior and was attracted to her husband prior, so I don't know what's going on there. So there's definitely faults in this book where it doesn't have the discussions that probably were needed but what it does do is it really does show the unique experience that Vivian had that does not match the typical stereotypical life of a white woman in America during the 40s to the 60s. I loved it for what it was and that is just this old woman talking about how wild her 20s were and all of the mistakes she made and all of the things looking back on her life now, what she would change if she would change, just seeing how she has grown as a person. I really loved this so, so much. Again, it is funny, it's realistic, it's unapologetic, and I enjoy this immensely. All right, you guys, so that is the end of this video. Definitely let me know if you have read any of these books or what your favorite read of February was. If you want to check out any of these books for yourself, I will have my Amazon affiliate link down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just helps me out in this channel. If you don't necessarily want to pick up any of these books for yourself, but you still want to support me, I have my Amazon wishlist, my coffee, as well as my PO box down in the description below. So have a ball. I really appreciate it. But that is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!